Well, hey everybody. It's finally nice enough out here and uh, I have the time to do it where we can get out and get into the hive. So through the winter, uh, I've come in and out of the hive a few times, just super quick, see if they need anything I could do for them. Um, but today it's 70 degrees Fahrenheit, about 21 degrees Celsius. And so we're gonna actually get into it today. Um, so this is my only colony that I had to go through the winter because I only had one colony. Um, but anyway, so this was kind of an experiment too because this is a nucleus colony. And so there's two mediums, five framers, and then this is a deep, but it only had three frames and then I used a, a frame feeder. This was, the top box was that quilt box. There's some videos about that. The reason why I chose this configuration was I listened to a really interesting podcast. I think it was uh, two bees in a podcast. And they were talking about um, overwintering and how to be more successful. And they said, uh, you know, in a tree, which is in the wild, where non-managed honeybees live, they have almost infinite insulation above them. Obviously, I can't make almost infinite insulation above them, but I can make it pretty close when you put in the quilt box and the sugar. Uh, so I'm looking at the entrance. They're, they're actually carrying out some sugar and some um, newspaper. Um, I'll take a look and see if any of them bringing in pollen. Uh, they're pretty active. It's a, it's a nice warm day. I do want to take a look and see what they're doing, um, what they need, if there's anything I can give them. There's some coming in with pollen. Yeah. There's a, a yellowish pollen in the air. I'm guessing it's, I don't know, but there's maples, skunk cabbage, uh, some stuff like that blooming. Yeah, I'll have to look that up. I'll, I'll put that in the comments if I figure it out. But anyway, um, I want to take a look and I'm not going to take anything off today as far as like the quilt box and, and everything's going back on. I did bring a piece of a pollen patty if they need it. They are bringing in pollen, but Hey, if some's good, more's probably better. And if they need some sugar water, I, I did bring some heavy sugar water, some two to one. So that's eight pounds sugar, half a gallon of water. Uh, I did leave the frame feeder in all winter. Um, it was empty, of course, but uh, I left it in there and then we're gonna, just gonna start probably refilling that and see where we get to. So I'm just gonna start breaking it down and see what we get. If there's anything interesting, I'll be sure to mention it. All right, so the first thing we'll talk about is food and you see this was their emergency sugar it had been clear full and they're eating it which uh, would tell me that there's nothing better available so definitely right on time with the liquid feed I also might notice that this box is in super scabby shape um, I bought this was a was a piece of a bigger board it's not plywood but it's it doesn't i mean i don't know if it's wood or not but anyway it held up okay enough i do have plans to replace it but um i didn't bring anything to replace it with today because uh wasn't sure what i was going to find i didn't want to disturb a lot of things that they had going i knew it was scabby but i think it'll make it to the next time this top only has three frames it's a deep but it's only got three frames because of the frame feeder there's some nectary looking stuff in there um, I don't know if there's a real big nectar source now or if it, I don't know if, you know one thing you gotta look out for right now is robbing believe it or not I know we usually think about robbing as being a, a late summer kind of uh, thing to watch for but you think about it if you got strong colonies coming out of winter and there's not a ton of forage why wouldn't they rob other colonies that maybe weren't as strong coming out as they are there doesn't appear to be any robbing today here this frame's pretty heavy so this frame's got a lot of probably funny honey I call it funny honey because I fed them a lot of sugar and heavy too Going into winter, I wanted to make sure they had anything they needed. So they got some food there. But you know, they're on the verge of a uh, population explosion. If you think about timing-wise, 
right? They're coming out, they're getting strong. They'll be ready to get the first nectars. Some more funny honey in this one. Good bees. So far they're being nice. I was a little bit nervous. I don't know these bees anymore. They don't know me. I don't know them. So far so good. <laughs> This middle box is pretty scabby too. They told me they didn't appreciate that. But anyway, we'll change these boxes over when we get a chance. No big rush. They lasted this long, they'll probably last again. Some old Swiffer. Some old Swiffer that I didn't get out last year that caught some beetles. No smoke. Have a smoke. You know, they haven't had me in these hives yet. They don't know that this is normal. So this is not normal for them. You can't get mad at bees for doing bee things. They, they uh, over the winter, they've put these frames together pretty solid, a lot of burr between. So we'll get this first one out and then we can work a little bit more confidently. Queen's probably in here somewhere. Queen these bottom two boxes. Well, this frame's got some good weight. This is a medium again. So more funny honey, pre bee bread. Maybe that's real honey, who knows? I give them some credit, right? They're bees, they make honey. So I'd, I'd love to see uh, some brood patches coming. I don't know if they'd be in this one or the bottom one. Yeah, there we go, there's a brood patch. Okay, uh, I see, it may be tough to see, this is just a cell phone camera folks, but in this corner, there's some capped, some uncapped, um, some very young larvae, so, so we're all in all, there's some on this side as well. I do see, there's not a lot of light out here, it's overcast, but I look, I think I saw some eggs. Oh. So I don't need to see a lot more as far as, I don't need to see the queen. There's some more capped brood, more caps there. And corresponding caps on the other side. So, so they, their population is increasing, like I say. Uh, they're on the edge of a boom. They're on the edge of wanting more room too. Um, so, so what I came out here prepared to do and what we'll do next is um, we'll, we'll do an oxalic acid dribble. So I brought, I made up some new oxalic acid when I, before I came out, I was at home and I, I did that. Um, that's something I believe in. I'm not saying you need to do it, but it's something that I believe in. And so, um, we'll, we'll do the dribble method. That's simplest for me. Um, and we'll pour, uh, five milliliters per frame. So, or per first seam So one, two, three, four. So there'll be, yeah, 50 milliliters is the most you want to do on a one colony. Which is just right for what we got here today. Oi. So yeah, this box is in some sorry shape, uh, but we'll, we'll get there. All right. I just wanted to kind of break that seal while I had two hands getting thumped. So this is my batch. 
and you should put poison on there so nobody thinks it's sugar water or something tasty snack if you got kids um, you should keep it away from kids so this this recipe was uh, 10 I'm sorry was uh, 300 grams of water 300 grams of sugar and 17 and a half grams of oxalic acid and then you put it into a syringe this is the way this method is made to do no matter how big the colony is 50 milliliters per colony and so what we'll do is make it easy and I haven't done this in a while so we're we'll rusty we try to squirt five milliliters per frame for a frame seam. And so now what we'll do is we'll move into this one and try to do five per. It's not perfect. Who's perfect? Nobody's perfect. Do your best. All right, now that gives us this box back. And we got a couple frames here. We've got 10 milliliters left. There we go. Empty syringe. So they had their treatment. So this is the frame feeder that I use. And it's pretty, pretty handy little critter. So I have this old one gallon water jug. I don't put water in anymore. And uh, what we'll do is we, we'll, we'll pour over your colony it's pretty thick you see how thick it is it's two to one I want thick nectar um, substitute right now if it's one to one or too runny they may think it's nectar and, and uh, I mean you see they're already rearing brood so maybe it wouldn't hurt but I don't want to take that chance either so <clears throat> I think this this frame feeder holds a gallon maybe a little bit plus it is um, a nice tool I'm gonna add more of these frame feeders Okay, so I, I do need to, um, something I didn't con consider, I do need to replace this box pretty quick, maybe today, um, because the, the frame rests are peeling away and they're causing the frames to be able to drop down. Um, not super critical, not moving it, don't need to worry about that much, but I um, do need to get that going. So uh, last thing I'm gonna do before I leave them alone, this is um, pollen patty I got. I get it from, um, a, a commercial beekeeper down in my region and uh, he's a pretty pretty good resource pretty good person to go to him and his family uh, so it's Bossler's Bee Supply search them on uh, on your social media look them up if you're in Northeast Ohio Southeast Ohio great resource so um, I had these in the freezer all winter and I just broke off a piece used my strong hand <laughs> and uh, anyway so I'm gonna give them this they do have pollen so not super critical uh, but now they got sugar water they got pollen substitute because uh, the 10-day the, the forecast doesn't look real great for a lot of flying days for them so what this will let them do is is get a little bit of resources um, I guess let me say it this way this will let them keep on trucking they don't need to slow down and drop the hammer and keep it going so all that's left to do is uh, now we'll we'll go ahead and tuck it all back together. If I do come out and replace this box, uh, you've probably seen that and don't need to see it again. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Hope you found it useful. If you did, uh, go ahead and like, share, subscribe, comment. Uh, like, I love it when people uh, ask questions, and I, I can't always answer them, but I can. We can help learn and figure it out together. So happy beekeeping.